Am I the jerk for telling my dad I don't need to listen to him anymore? Here is the revised text, some backstory. My mom and dad got divorced when I was approximately 8 years old, and my mom got primary custody. My brother and I had dinner with him on Wednesday nights and spent every other weekend with him. Over the summer I turned 18. My mom has always allowed me to be quite independent, so it has not really been a big change. Mostly, it involves medical stuff. As my school year begins to start, I have been hanging out with a few friends before they leave for college. I am still a senior in high school. I had planned to hang out with friends on Friday, which happened to be his weekend with us and included Friday nights. I texted him on Tuesday afternoon and said, Friday night I'm going to get dinner with some friends. Depending on how late I'm out, I might sleep at mom's because their house is close to ours. I was just indicating that if I stayed out late, I would sleep at mom's instead of taking the 30 minute drive to his house past midnight. I do not drink at all, but my mom is, rightfully, a little scared of me driving at night. I thought nothing of it and just texted him quickly to let him know they would have one less for dinner. Apparently, it was not just a little thing. He texted me back saying, I think you should rephrase that as a question rather than a statement. I was kind of taken aback by that because I was trying to be nice and let him know ahead of time. I talked to my mom and she said it was up to me. She agrees with me that since I am 18, I can stay at whoever's house I want to. That is essentially what I told him. I did not want to be unpleasant about it because I like my dad. It is not like we have a bad relationship, I think we get along really well. So I texted him back, saying that it was a statement, not a question, and that I could stay where I wanted to, either with him or mom. He got a little mad at that and kinda told me off about it. I said that I would be back for dinner Saturday night at his house. Friday came and it all honestly played out fine. There are not really any hard feelings, but I just think my dad is still mad at me. Am I the jerk for talking to him that way? You are not the one to blame. You're an adult now and it's time you realize that. Parents should understand that it's natural for their kids to rebel and eventually gain independence. As long as you're not getting into trouble, making your own decisions is part of growing up. Am I the jerk for reporting my friend's family's business to our country's labor ministry? My friend's family runs a successful small business. I needed a job this summer to have some spending money during the school year. I asked for a job at his business, which is a produce wholesaler. He asked his father and I got the job. I assumed I would get paid minimum wage and that they ran a legitimate business. I was trained within a day and was on my own after that. The work was physically tough and mentally stressful. I had to keep pace to meet my pit quota. I picked boxes and bags and loaded them onto a pallet. We used non-electric pallet jacks which made it even tougher. The shift was 12 hours and by the end of it I was extremely tired and my body ached. I thought I was earning a lot of money considering I worked 60 to 70 hours. I really thought I was raking in the overtime hours, but this was not the case. I was paid $1,000 after two weeks and approximately 130 hours worked. By comparison my sister who works at the local cafe earns that much working 32 hours per week. The minimum wage in my country is $11 per hour. I was paid around $7 to $8 per hour and it was cash, so I do not have any protection. If an accident were to happen I would not get any compensation. All his employees were migrants as well, so they thought they could not complain. I went to his dad first and asked to be paid the legal way. I asked to be paid at least minimum wage and to be compensated for my overtime hours as well. He laughed and thought I was joking. He believed he was doing me a huge favor. He gave me the equivalent of $50 and sent me on my way. I felt cheated and asked my parents for help. My father told me to file a complaint with the labor ministry. I made the call the very next day, and within a month, they did an investigation. My friend's dad got multiple charges. He will probably get contacted and audited by the tax authority as well, since his business is primarily cash-based. I finally got the money he owed me for my labor. While this was happening, my friend kept trying to contact me and asked me to cancel the investigation, as if I had the power to call it off. He tried to apologize, and when that did not work, he resorted to insults. He claimed that I was jealous and that I sabotaged his family, all in our group discord. There is a lot more, but that is the gist of it. Am I the antagonist? You have done nothing wrong. How is this even a question? They were taking advantage of their workers by not even paying minimum wages, which is both unethical and illegal. The business owner deserves to be charged for exploiting his employees. Reporting them was the right thing to do, and it helps protect other workers from being bullied into overworking and getting underpaid. Am I the jerk for giving my husband's niece special attention? I am a 32-year-old female married to Todd, a 35-year-old male. He comes from a large family with many nieces and nephews. Family gatherings took some getting used to since I am an only child of two only children, but it is fun. Todd and I do not really want to have our own children, so we are the cool aunt and uncle. We have successful careers and make significantly more money between the two of us than anyone else in the family, so we try to spoil the kids a little at birthdays and Christmas. One of the nieces, Ashley, who is 13 years old, has a more difficult situation than the others. Ashley's mother got pregnant right out of high school, and the father left. Her stepfather does a decent job, and I think he tries to treat her like her siblings, 
but it is clear that Ashley knows she is different and has feelings about it. Her mother has two other children under four years old, and there is not a lot of spare attention or money in the house. When the younger children were born and I could see that Ashley was having trouble with it, Todd and I started offering to have her over in our place, more so that her mother could focus on the babies and Ashley could have a break. Her mother has always been grateful for the help. I occasionally send her back with a new outfit, books or a souvenir I bought her on a work trip. The extra attention has really helped her settle down, and she is doing better in school and seems to be coping with her siblings. It did not occur to Todd or me that the rest of the family did not know we were doing all that, and it came to a head right before school started. I was going to go to the beach for a few days while Todd was traveling for work, and I invited Ashley to come with me for a girl's trip. She rarely gets to travel, and her parents were happy for her to have the opportunity, so we had a blast. I had sent her mother a lot of pictures and she posted some in the family group chat. Apparently, some of the other children saw them and were hurt that they did not get invited to go, and the parents were kind of mad. Todd explained to them individually that we feel like Ashley needs the extra attention, but his siblings are now mad that we are playing favorites and somewhat mad at Ashley's mother for accepting so much from us. His parents said that they know we are trying to be nice, but we should not do more for Ashley than for the rest of the family because it stirs up bad feelings and jealousy. You are not responsible for this. You and Todd have been incredibly thoughtful and generous in recognizing Ashley's unique circumstances and providing her with much needed attention, support, and experiences. It's unfortunate that this situation has caused some tension within the family, but it's essential to remember that every child has different needs, and sometimes that requires individualized attention and resources. Your family members might feel slighted or jealous, but it's vital to communicate openly and clearly that your efforts are not about favoring Ashley, but rather providing her with support that she may not be getting elsewhere. These adults need to grow up and understand your intentions are to help, not to create resentment or jealousy. Am I the jerk for disinviting my cousin from my wedding because of them spreading lies about me to my fiancé? I am a 25-year-old female, and my fiancé is a 27-year-old male. We are supposed to get married in three months. I have a cousin who is a 23-year-old male, with whom I used to be pretty close before this incident. He also became really close friends with my fiancé, and lately he has been hanging out with my cousin much more than I ever did. Yesterday, after my fiancé came back from hanging out with my cousin, he suddenly started accusing me of being pregnant and asked me if I was seeing another man because he did not think the child could be his as he used protection. I asked him what he was talking about as I am not pregnant, nor am I cheating on him, but he said that my cousin already told him about my pregnancy and his concerns that he may not be the father, so now he wanted the truth. I was completely dumbfounded as I cannot understand why my cousin would have told him something like this, as he has never done anything like this before. My fiancé literally refused to believe me until I did a pregnancy test to prove to him that I was not actually pregnant. When I confronted my cousin about why he lied to my fiancé, he said that he assumed I must have been pregnant because of how suspicious I had been acting lately. I do not even know what that is supposed to mean, and he did not give me a clear answer. He wanted to give my fiancé a heads up. He said he never implied that my potential child would have been another man's, and my fiancé must have assumed that because he was using protection, even though my fiancé explicitly said that my cousin warned him that I might be pregnant with another man's child. I tried to pressure him to give me a clear answer, but he just told me to leave him alone as it was not that big of a deal since my fiancé and I already sorted it out. Honestly, I was so mad at his lack of transparency that I told him that I would prefer if he did not attend our wedding after what happened. He was shocked and said I was overreacting over a silly mistake and that I should let it go but I told him that for now, this is my decision. However, my fiancé told me that I cannot unilaterally disinvite him from our wedding because my cousin is also his friend. When I reminded him that he literally almost jeopardized our relationship, my fiancé defended him by saying that he was just looking out for him and did not mean to cause problems for us. Honestly, I was so weirded out by my fiancé's entire behavior from this entire situation that I have decided to not fight it for now. I just told him that I do not want to keep arguing about this endlessly and we are going to address the issue with my cousin during the weekend. My fiancé agreed with my request, but he went to visit my cousin even today, even though we still have not addressed the issues about his lies fully. Am I the antagonist? I think you are not in the wrong here. It's time to call off the wedding. Your fiancé believed a six-month friend over his own fiancé and didn't even discuss the allegations with you. Red flags are popping out of the woodwork, and it's worth reconsidering if this is the life you want. You're not even married yet, and already he finds your cousin more trustworthy than you. Am I the jerk for refusing to dress my twins identically for the family picture? I am the mother of one-year-old identical twin girls. I have never liked the idea of dressing them identically because, while they are twins, they are not the same child. Whenever I am given matching outfits, I mix and match them to make them look different or rotate who wears what. I have always felt it is important that they be allowed their own sense of self and not have twin pushed on them as a major part of their identity. Family pictures are coming up soon for my great-grandmother's 80th birthday. We want to commemorate this with pictures, and my mother has booked professional photographs for this. The dress code is formal. 
I have bought one daughter a sparkly purple dress because she is like a little magpie, anything sparkly and she is all over it. For my other daughter, I have bought a green dress with flowers on it because she loves flowers. I plan to do one daughter's hair in pigtails and the other will have a hairband. My mother called me and asked me to dress them alike as it will look cute for the picture. I told her she knows how I feel about that and that we will not be doing that. I told her I had already bought dresses. She offered to buy them new matching dresses but I refused. She told me I was being ridiculous and said it was only one picture and would not kill them. When I asked if she had bought my brother's daughters, who were 11 and 7 years old, matching dresses, she said no. When I asked why my children should dress alike, her answer was that they are identical twins. This led to a heated conversation. I told my mother that they are my daughters, and it is my decision. All she needs to be concerned about is them being presentable and matching the dress code. She told me I am being selfish and it would not matter, pointing out how many twins like to dress alike. I told her that if they wished to dress alike one day I would not stop them, but until then, this is what I was doing. My brother has since called me and asked me to just do it, saying that our mother is stressed out. He suggested that I could change the girls out of the matching dresses after the picture, and that it is only a picture and would keep the peace. I know it is only a picture, but it just feels wrong to me. Is it really unreasonable of me to not bend on this? In my opinion, you have done nothing wrong here. The kids are ultimately yours, and their clothing choices are up to you. If your mom wants a photo shoot, she needs to negotiate how they're dressed. You've made your limits clear, and she can either agree or not have the photos done. I'm glad you're not indulging the twin thing. There have been some troubling posts about families going too far with it. Am I the jerk for intentionally leaving my sibling at school? I, 17-year-old female, just started my senior year of high school. My sister, 14-year-old female, started her freshman year at the same school, and since I have my license, I drive her to and from school pretty much every day. My sister and I are not close since we are very different people. Having to drive her has been miserable. She is usually a few minutes late getting into the car in the morning. Once we get to school, she complains about having to walk alone to the main building and does not want to get out of my car because she wants to wait for her friends. Getting home after school is grating. She either takes forever to get to my car, up to 20 minutes late, or gets there before me and repeatedly texts or calls me to hurry up. Today my friends and I were hanging out and chatting for a bit longer than usual after school. I expected a bunch of texts telling me to get to my car, but did not get any, so I assumed she was getting picked up by someone else and had already left. When my friends and I started walking to the senior parking lot where I was parked, I passed her and a few of her freshman friends in the hallway going in the opposite direction of the senior lot. I said something along the lines of, hey, come to the senior lot, we're leaving now. She responded with, do I look like I am going to the senior lot? In a rude voice. I genuinely thought I had misheard her and got confused, so I asked if I was supposed to be driving her home. She said, are you driving me? Are we in a car right now? In the same voice. She was not joking. All her friends were giggling when she walked away and ignored me when I asked, hey, what? because I was so taken aback by how rude she was for no reason. My friends who were with me were equally shocked. I was so upset between that and a culmination of the smaller stuff from the past two weeks that I just got in my car and left her at school. I was halfway home when she texted me, not apologizing or saying she had another ride home. She asked me if I could move my car to the front of the school to pick her up because she did not want to walk all the way to the senior lot. I did not feel bad anymore once I read that and ignored her call when she realized I had left. Once I got home, I told my mom what had happened and she immediately called my sister and reprimanded her before going to pick her up. My school is only about a mile away from my house, but traffic backs up so badly after school's let out that it can take more than 20 minutes for me to get home, so my mom was really annoyed that she had to get her. My parents said they would talk to her and set expectations for her. So, am I the antagonist? I understand that she is in the awkward young teen phase and probably gets annoyed at me having to drive her too but I feel like she has been unreasonably rude for the past few weeks, and the incident today really upset me. You are not the bad guy in this situation. If she can't be respectful, she can walk or take public transit home. Setting clear expectations like being in the car at a set time or facing the consequence of walking is fair. If parents are paying for the gas and insurance, then their rules apply. She abused the convenience of a ride, and it's reasonable to enforce some boundaries. Thanks for watching. When you subscribe, make sure to hit the bell to turn on notifications so you never miss a video. To finish listening to all the stories, check out the playlist in the description.